here we go. Okay, my name is Giordano Pula from the Department of Pharmacy and Pharmacology. In my lab, we investigate thrombosis, hemostasis, and vascular biology. We have different projects ongoing at the moment, but today I want to talk to you about a project we have on platelets. Platelets are, here you have a picture, here is a platelet, uh, are small cells without a nucleus which are continuously released by the bone marrow in the bloodstream, where they remain for seven to 10 days before being eliminated. Their role in the bloodstream is to patrol the, uh, the blood vessel. They detect where there are damages, injuries, and they form a plug to stop the bleeding. And we call it hemostasis. Hemo is blood, and stasis is control. Um, they do so by detecting certain proteins appearing in the damaged blood vessels. They undergo activation, so they form these protrusions. You can see the change of shape here. They become much more sticky, and they start to clump with each other. They do so by binding fibrinogen, which is a plasma protein. And uh, basically, a clot is a big mass of uh, platelets kept together by fibr fibrinogen. They also uh, generate fibrin, which is an, a, a, a filamentous protein which traps other cells from the bloodstream, and uh, sometimes it, uh, it traps pathogens. So there is an immune role for platelets as well. Unfortunately, sometimes platelets become over-enthusiastic about their role, and we help them along by bad uh, lifestyle choices, like bad food and uh, smoking and alcohol, and they form a clot where and when is not needed, which leads to occlusion of a blood vessel and starvation of the tissues uh, downstream of oxygen and nutrients. The tissues die when this happens in heart. We have heart attacks in the brain. We have strokes, very serious diseases. And uh, uh, we want to fight this. In the clinics at the moment, there are three main drugs to fight these diseases, warfarin, aspirin, and clopidogrel. They are not ideal because they are not very good at stopping uh, clot formation in the arteries. They are not very fast active. And we tend to develop resistance or side effects like bleeding. Hence, we are still doing a lot of drug discovery for new uh, drugs able to stop platelet activation. The project that I'm presenting today is on this uh, protein here, extracellular fibrinogen binding protein, or EFB, which is produced by this bacterium here, Staphylococcus aureus, nasty bacterium, uh, responsible for nasty infections, uh, but amongst all the bad things that this bacterium does, it also does some interesting things, like <coughs> releasing a series of proteins which interact and modulate the activity of platelets. Some of them inhibit platelets. The most remarkable one is EFB, the protein I'm talking to you today, which has been suggested to inhibit uh, platelet activation. So we uh, expressed it, we uh, uh, isolated the, uh, the protein, and we tested it in our preferred uh, experimental model of uh, uh, clot formation, which is going to appear in a second. It looks like that, and what it does is we pump blood uh, from one vessel to the, from one well to the other through a micro vessel, and we look at it with a microscope. So we recreate a, a blood vessel in our experimental um, setup. Clots appear like those uh, big blobs uh, fluorescently labeled. That is what happens with normal blood. When we add EFB to the blood, we highly reduce the formation of clots. So yes, EFB works. Next, we wanted to understand which part of the protein is responsible for this antiplatelet effect. So we uh, chopped the platelet in half, and term is almost responsible for fibrinogen binding, and c is for binding other proteins in the plasma. And we tested them, again, with our system. The C-terminus doesn't do anything to clot formation, so let's forget about C-terminus. And terminus is very active. So we know that the part of the protein we are interested in is in the end terminus. What we are doing next, we are chopping the end terminus further, and we are testing the different fragments to identify exactly which portion of the protein is responsible for inhibiting platelets, and we hope to make it into an antiplatelet drug with less side effects because it's small, and with a better pharmacology because it will be more efficient in its administration. Finally, I want to thank people in the lab, Dina and Tiago, and my collaborators in Bath, the doctor, Dr. Bagby Posner and UPDI, here in Bath, and Ilaria Cronobio in Italy. And finally, the sources of my uh, current funding, BBSRC, Welcome Trust, Alzheimer's Research UK, and the Royal Society. And I think I'm done. <laughs>